Hello everybody and welcome back to the show. In today's episode, I am going to finally build the assembly line. I've built all the necessary components to get started with that. I couldn't figure out where I wanted to put it, so I decided to make a second floor. Anyway, I've also built for myself an elevator. This is from the Pneumatic Craft mod, and I forgot to block up the floor here. So yeah, this is the elevator, and as you walk up, you can see there's a 1 and a 2. That's because there's two floors. If I right click on the two, you'll see the elevator extend up to that floor. And I can right click on the one again and bring it back down. These are pretty cool. You can actually have as many floors as you like, as long as you build the infrastructure for it. And there we go. So as I said, I'm going to build the assembly line up here. I'm not exactly sure where. I need to bring in some compressed air which will go into the assembly controller. So let me find out where the best place to do that is going to be. I'll go back downstairs. So it looks like this comes up right here. So that might be a good place to start. Go back up. And I will place in pressure tube there. Oops, there. There, there we go. Will this go on top and receive pressure? Yes, it will. So you can see the assembly controller is receiving pressure. Now, as I said, the assembly controller is the first component of the assembly line. And you can see here the assembly controller status. All of these are red because they don't yet exist. That's why they say they're offline. It does need to receive pressure, as you can see here. And it is receiving it from my main system down below. And there are, of course, upgrades as usual. And here's some information on what you can do with it. Now, the first thing I'm going to add on to here is the assembly laser, I think. Hmm. How do I want to go about this exactly? Go this direction, maybe? Um, yes, I think I'll go this way. So there's the laser. Next to that, I'm going to place down an assembly platform, like that, and two assembly I.O. units on either side of that, one here and one here. Now, these are both set to, I think, output. If we go look here again, yes, or import, you'll see I have two, it shows, it's showing here I have two I.O. units set to import. I really need to make one of them become export. I don't know if I can do that with a Yetta wrench. Let's find out. Like that. No, that. That. No. All right. Well, that just means that I'm going to have to build the Pneumatic Craft tool. And that is, real quick, called the Pneumatic Wrench. Where is it at? Pneumatic Wrench, where are you? There it is, the Pneumatic Wrench. So let me make one of those and charge it up. I've built the pneumatic wrench. Unfortunately, it needs pressure in it in order to work. And as you can see, currently it has no pressure. The way you pressure it is with charging station. So I've built one of those and uh, hooked it up to my air compression unit or my air compressor, my air compression system. And all it's doing here is put the pneumatic wrench here and it will begin to charge up. Now, it can only charge up to the amount that's in the air compression system. So since I have it kind of maxed out at uh, four bars, I can only charge the pneumatic wrench up to four bars. But it will uh, do that. I could put some speed upgrades in here in order to uh, cause the pneumatic wrench to charge a bit faster but I don't think that will be completely necessary in this case. In fact, I am not even gonna wait for it to pressurize all the way up. It's at two and a half bars. That should be sufficient for right now. And again, this is the tool for pneumatic craft. Go back upstairs. And again, I need to turn one of these into the export. So I can right click on that one and it'll change colors to indicate that it's now different. And so now if I go in here, you will see that the laser's online, the platform's online, the export I.O. unit is online and the import I.O. unit is online. I do not yet, I have not yet made the assembly drill, so that will stay offline, but I don't need it. Basically, to use the assembly line, there are three different programs. 
There is an assembly program for drilling, as you can see here, and it tells you what machines you need. The controller, the platform, import and export, and a drill. There is a program for laser, which is similar, except instead of drill, it's laser. And there's a program for drill and laser, which requires both of those. I'm primarily interested at this point in making the laser program. And unfortunately, it's expensive again. Another eight emeralds. This mod loves to use emeralds. Sadly, for me, I have found I have mined up some more emeralds. So I have some more, but this is gonna knock me back down to only having two, which is pretty bad. So let me get out that rose red dye again and make the drill or sorry, the laser program. All right, so now I have the laser program. Again, the message that being able to obtain these programs is supposed to be get done through a villager. And when that mechanic is finalized, that's the way it will be done. So now I can put this program into the assembly controller. And now the assembly controller is set to run. As you can see, it requires about three and a half bars of pressure. And now all it needs is the materials that it needs to work. So this here is the export IO, uh, the export IO, and I think I need a chest that will go here and another chest that will go here. And the way this works is this is the input IO, the input arm input IO, is that what it's called? Now I'm confusing myself. The assembly IO unit, yeah, the import IO unit. It will take things out of this chest, place them onto the assembly platform, the laser will then laser it, and then the export IO unit will take it off of there and put it into this chest. So what can we make with the laser program? Well, one of the things that we can make with the laser program is printed circuit boards, or I'm not sorry, not printed circuit boards, but the unassembled PCB. You can see here, that if I take the empty PCB, instead of going through the whole UV light box etching acid process, I can place this into the assembly line with the laser program and it will automatic and it will turn it into the unassembled PCB without having to go through all of those steps. Okay, so again, combining a piece of green plastic with one compressed iron ingot will get me the unassembled uh, PCB, which is in there because I don't have this set correct, that's okay. So that'll come back out, and there it is. And now I can take this upstairs to the assembly line, place it into the input, I, into the input chest, and now you will see, as I said, this arm will reach into the chest, grab that unassembled PCB, and it is fairly slow. Speed upgrades in the controller will make the entire process go a bit faster. As you can see, it's actually you can actually see it carrying the unas uh, unassembled PCB there, or the whatever it's called. Places it onto the table. The laser now comes along, or the platform. The laser comes along and begins etching the uh, or lasering, I guess the PCB so it's going through its process there and once it's done you can see it even looks like the, uh, the finished product the export IO unit will come along grab it very gently and sadly very slowly boy it is really slow <laughs> I will have definitely have to get some speed upgrades on this and then it will place it into the chest which it's doing again very slowly. All right, and it's done. And then I can reach in and now I have the unassembled PCB. And then again, I just need to combine that with transistors and capacitors, and then I will get the finalized printed circuit board. But that is the basics of how the assembly line works. Now, there are other things, of course, besides the printed circuit boards that can be made in the assembly line. For example, advanced pressure tubes can be made with the laser program and some pressure chamber valves. And the advanced pressure tube is somewhat important because 
First of all, it allows me to make the flux compressor, which I do want to make. That's a necessary component of the flex flux compressor. But another thing you may have noticed in the charging station, we'll run back down here. This charging station can hold up to, can go up to 20 bars of pressure. Now these compressors, these basic compressors only compress up to five bars of pressure. And these basic pressure tubes can only go up to five bars of pressure. The advanced pressure tubes are needed to get up to 20 bars of pressure. Of course, you need something like the flux compressor to get up to 20 bars of pressure. But the point being that if you want your charging station to work at, at a higher rate than a maximum of five bars of pressure, you're going to need something that will generate more than five bars of pressure. In this case, in my case, I'm gonna do it with a flux compressor. And you also need the advanced pressure tubes because without those, because the basic pressure tubes can't handle pressure above five bars of pressure. Anyway, and I think I said the word pressure way too many times in that explanation, but the point being that if you want more pressure in the system, you need the advanced stuff and you need to make that advanced stuff in the assembly line. Well, I finally built the flux compressor. And the flux compressor, as I mentioned before, will operate off of RF power. I have to supply it with RF power and it will generate compressed air. Now you can see that the compressor will generate up to 20 bars and past 20 is the danger red zone for the flux compressor. So it can generate more air pressure than these standard air compressors, which only go up to five bars. But it will actually be a bit slower than, than the air compressors because of the nature of the way it works. Essentially, there's a 40%, uh, only a 40% only a efficiency rate. And that's just a, uh, a, the, something that the author has done to keep it from being a little overpowered, I believe. But there's a couple of different issues here. Some of the equipment, some of the machinery in this mod, for example, the pressure chamber uses up to five bars of pressure before it will explode. The assembly line similarly can go up to five bars of pressure before it will explode. But some pieces of equipment like the charger here can actually go up to 20 bars of pressure before it will explode. So there's a mixture of equipment that can go up to five and some that can go up to 20. In addition, these the regular pressure tubes, which is what I've been using so far, they can only go up to five bars of pressure, but the advanced pressure tubes can go up to 20 bars of pressure. So the ideal situation is to be able to power or to power this RF, uh, this flux compressor with RF, let it generate up to around 20 bars of pressure but regulate things in such a way that the machinery that can only handle five bars of pressure only receives that much so that it won't explode, but the machinery that can receive 20 bars of pressure will receive more so that it can operate at a better efficiency. So I am going to work on setting all that up, and once I get it completed, I'll show you what I've come up with. Okay, the way to control some of the pressure is with this item here, the regulator tube module. And when that's placed on a tube, what happens is at this point, I can control how much air pressure will come through the regulator tube. So if I attach my regular pressure tubes on this end, and the advanced pressure tubes on that end, what I can do is I can tell this particular regulator how much pressure to allow through here, which will be under five, because that's the maximum it can take whereas the maximum of 20 can still flow through the advanced pressure tubes. Now, if you look here, you will see that the way it's controlled is by a redstone formula again, and it's 7.5 minus the redstone times 0.5. But obviously if you see that, that would imply that the maximum would be 7.5. And if I want it to be at a maximum of say 4.5, I would need to add, what would that be, six uh, redstone, a redstone signal of six or more, something along those lines. However, there is somewhat of an easier way to do things, and that is with these advanced PCBs. 
The advanced PCB is made from a regular PCB and some plastic and redstone. And what it does is it allows you to give a more advanced interface to the device in question. So if I right click this on the regulator tube like so, it will install the advanced PCB in there. And now if I click it, here you can see what, what I can set. So I can tell it where I want... I'm not explaining that very well. <laughs> what this is, is the redstone goes from 7.5 to 0. But I could change this so that the redstone goes from 22.4 to 6.1 or 8.0 to 6.1 or you know any kind of combination in there that I want that I can set these sliders to and this represents the range of the redstone signal so a redstone signal of 0 would be 16.3 bars the maximum redstone signal of 15 would be 5.5 bars and again you can set this to anything you want in between there so what I think is convenient is to put this at four and a half and this one also at 4.3 or uh, 4.5 is really what I want it to be at. So let me put it at 4.5 like that. And this means that no matter how much of a redstone signal it receives, it will regulate the pressure through this tube at four and a half. And so that means I can just take a simple lever to activate it. And I think if I put one here would that work Oop, let me go back into this interface and you can see yes it's receiving a current threshold of four and a half if i turn that lever off the hmm <laughs> current threshold four and a half oh uh yeah i'm i'm being silly the threshold is going to be four and a half because whether it's receiving a redstone signal or not the redstone signal going from 0 to 15 is always going to be 4.5, meaning that I don't actually need this thing here. But as an but maybe as an example, I'll say, let's say I put the low the high end at 19.2 and the low end at 1.2. You can see right now the current threshold is 1.2. If I turn the uh, red the if I turn the lever on, giving it a maximum redstone signal, you can see now it's at the higher end of this of 19.2. And as I adjust the high end slider, you can see the current threshold there changing because that is what, because this is giving the maximum redstone signal. If I turn the lever off, I'm now getting the minimum redstone signal. And so that would be affected by this bar as you can see it changing there. So, but I don't need it now. I realize I don't need it. I can pick up my lever maybe. And I can set this to, as I said, and you can type in numbers in here too if you want to, 4.5 and 4.5 like that and so that means that only 4.5 bars of pressure will be allowed to go through this tube and that will then connect up to these devices which take a maximum of five bars of pressure now so far the only thing i have which uses a higher amount of pressure is the charging station again it can go up to 20 bars of pressure so following along the advanced pressure tubes without a regulation regulator on it that will feed directly into the charger so with this setup here what should happen if I haven't screwed it up which is always a possibility this flux compressor will eventually generate up to 20 bars of pressure but this regulator will make sure only four and a half bars goes through to these devices but will but it will also allow 20 bars to go through to the charging station so let me hook this up to the hooch farm power and see if I did it correctly so right now everything is hooked up to power coming from the hooch farm currently everything is operating very slowly as I said this is actually a slower process than using the regular air compressors and it's primarily because it's only operating at about 20 RF per tick now I can increase that by putting in some speed upgrades and gotta be somewhat careful with that because now I'm doing 200 RF per tick you could actually generate uh, a lot a lot more air pressure than you might kind of want but it's going now it's still really slow so I'm gonna steal some more speed upgrades from these other machinery these other parts of the system and put them in there and see what I end up with that okay so now you can see the pressure is growing and it's almost up to five 
and I'm going to take this out because pressure in that is growing. What I need is the, I have them somewhere. Where did I put one? I have one. Oh, there we go. I have two. The pressure gauge tube modules. And that will show me how much pressure is running through these particular uh, tubes. So as you can see, this one's got about two and a half bars of pressure, which seems about right. Now it should cap it at about four and a half bars of pressure. So let's go ahead and put these speed upgrades back in here. And I should be able to see this grow, but hopefully see it stop at four and a half. Looks like it stopped at four. Yes, so there we go. Oops, I'm gonna take these out again because it's getting to be high. But here you can see I've got this uh, pressure gauge module is showing pressure at just a little over four. You can see I'm just a little bit below four and that is because there is so much tube between them that it's causing some loss of pressure. But this tube, which is the advanced tube, you can see is almost up to 10. So this regulator, again, which is designed to keep the pressure on this end uh, to be at a low number, is working. It's keeping it at four and a half, roughly four and a half uh, bars of pressure. And that's the most amount of pressure that's going through to the other items in the system. I can check them. Yes, there we go. And that is what I, of course, is what I wanted it to be but at the same time allowing higher amounts of pressure to go through the advanced pressure tube like so. But the next thing that I need to do is I have to worry about this. As you can see, it is still generating pressure. Now I can completely shut it off with the redstone signal, of course, but obviously I want this to generate pressure up to some certain maximum amount. And, and then stop. I don't want to have to keep coming back to it over and over. Now, you'll remember that these pressure gauges, they emit a redstone signal, you know, based upon the strength of the pressure in the system. So this is at four and a half. It should generate about nine redstone signal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, it's getting about eight. So it's just below four and a half. This, what's interesting, and I think it's a little bit strange, but I understand it in a certain sense too. Even though this pressure gauge, which is attached to an advanced tube, it knows that it can go up to 20 bars of pressure, it still emits redstone on the same formula as this one. So even though there is about, let's see, nine, which would be a redstone signal of 18, obviously you can't do that because redstone signals can only go up to 15. However, there is a fix to that problem, or a solution to that problem, I should say. I'm going to take that pressure gauge off of there. Where did you go? There you are. And I'm going to put the pressure gauge here. And so you can see the pressure is almost at 9. Well, it is at 9. It's almost at 10, I guess. Now, if I use an advanced PCB and right click it onto the pressure gauge, I now get the same type of interface that I got from this regulator tube and I can do the same kind of thing. So you can see the default setting is going from a, the lowest redstone signal would be zero and the highest redstone signal would be 7.5. But I can, of course, change that if I so desire. And so I'm going to set it to be at about, oh, let's put it at about 17. 17 should be plenty below the threshold of 20, like so. And so now this will emit a redstone signal based upon that range, 17 to 17. And if I put a redstone dust down here, you can see that I'm not getting any signal off of it because it hasn't reached at least a level of 17. In fact, maybe just to be safe, I might put the high end on 19, uh, oops, the lower end on 17, and the high end on maybe 19. And so this means it will generate a redstone, redstone signal when the pressures are between those numbers with a low, with the 
redstone signal of, of one or zero or one being at 17 and redstone signal of 15 being at 19. Either way, it will produce a redstone signal when it gets up to 17 bars of pressure. And what that means I can do is because it's any, any redstone signal, I can now use some redstone conduits to pick up that redstone signal. And oops, I'll put one there, one there, and then wrench these so that they are pointing to those devices like so. And now I can set the flux compressor to be enabled on a low signal only. So when this pressure gets up to 17, it will turn this on, which will turn off the flux compressor. And anytime it falls below 17, it will, con it will do that again. Let me make another pressure gauge real quick. Now I'm going to put this pressure gauge on this side. The only problem with this setup is this covers up the pressure gauge, obviously, so I can't see it. But as you can see, our pressure is right almost at 10, and it's still climbing because, of course, it's still active. And I'm going to put these speed upgrades into it again, and hopefully we should see it stop when it gets to be at a pressure of about 17. And there we go, it stops. So you can see it's at 17.4 bars of pressure. I'm going to take... I might take the speed upgrades out of it for now. So it worked as far as this goes. As you can see, this uh, conduit is now lit up because it's on. Once the pressure got to 17, it shut off the flux compressor. And even though the pressure in this advanced tube is at 17, the pressure in the basic tube is at four and a half, which is good. So now I have a a system that will run off of RF power, which means I won't be burning unnecessary charcoal, and it will keep my low pressure systems at low pressure while allowing higher pressure to get through to my higher pressure items. And there we go, my new pneumatic craft setup. I like it, it uses the RF power instead of burning charcoal. I just think that's a lot better in a lot of ways, and I will be utilizing more of pneumatic craft in the next episode. So thank you so much for joining me. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you next time.